side. And so starting off with the big picture here, right? Let's start off with evidence class as a whole. Like, what is the goal here? Now, you have essentially this initial threshold for evidence to be admissible. Kyra, what's going to be that uh, initial threshold for evidence to be admissible? Well, you're going to ask, is, is it relevant? It's going to be Got the it. big picture question. Right. Is it relevant? That's really the threshold to be admissible. And then for the whole semester, essentially, you're learning all these different ways to then exclude evidence, to find it inadmissible. And that's the lens that you want to look at a lot of these rules, right? Character evidence. That's a rule that ultimately is used to exclude evidence. Hearsay, a rule used to exclude evidence. Opinion testimony a rule used to exclude evidence, right? So a lot of these rules are designed to see, can I exclude it under this rule, right? And then obviously the proponent of the rule is gonna be doing what? Let's go to Jenny. Jenny, what's the proponent of, excuse me, not the rule, the evidence. What are they gonna be arguing? Um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? My headphones are kind of like being funky. Okay, so yeah. I was saying, most rules and evidence are designed to keep the evidence out, right? So you raise the hearsay rule to take it out. You raise the character evidence rule to right rule out the evidence. But the proponent of the evidence, what's essentially their task in all of this? Um, well, wouldn't they argue that the evidence should be admitted because it is both material and probative to like a fact of consequence? So that'll be back to like it's relevant. But really, yeah. the mindset that I want you to be in is that once a... Once an adversary says, oh, objection hearsay or objection character evidence, the other side is figuring out what is one of the loopholes for that particular rule. And oh, that's yeah, that it should be admissible under a certain exception. Exactly. So it's one of those weird things, Jenny, that with evidence, you have these rules, like let's say hearsay, right, that says, oh, hearsay is inadmissible. But then there's a million ways around it. Right. Character evidence. Oh, you can't allow character evidence. But here's all these loopholes. So make sure you guys are understanding the game here that one side is going to argue this rule is a grounds for excluding it. And the other side is just looking. What's my framework within this analysis? What are all the different ways around this rule? All right. So going a step further with character evidence, Jenny, let me go back to you. So when you think of character evidence, what is the big picture for what this rule is here for? Why is this rule or on what grounds is this rule typically triggered to exclude evidence? Um, I believe to prevent like the jury information that it's gonna use to make judgment in a wrong, like if it's like unfairly prejudicial or anything like that. Got it, right? And we're looking then, and that's definitely correct, right? And we're looking for somebody offering evidence that is like, oh, you've done something like this before, or your personality is this way, and that makes it more likely that you committed this crime. Christian, like, overall, we don't really love that type of evidence. At the end of the day, if we're, if we're having a fair fight regarding this trial and this incident, what do you think is, you know, the ideal type of evidence to determine this person's guilt? What is the ideal like to like admit it like an exception? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Let's say let's say you're on trial right now for for stealing cookies from the cookie jar, right? On October eighth, you're on trial for stealing cookies from the cookie jar. What would be the ideal evidence that you know you could come up with and bring in to prove that that here uh, Christian is guilty of this? Oh, he would probably want like uh like material evidence, you know. Um, but you know we would normally get like testimony is typically what we get. Yeah, and let's make it tangible. Give me some examples, right? So we have a video recording, right, of the ring camera showing him go into the house and steal the cookies, right? We have testimony of somebody who was in the house that saw Christian steal the cookies. You would be dealing with evidence that just had to do with the situation. But what sometimes happens is, right, the prosecution may want to say, well, Christian actually stole cookies two years ago. Right. So we want to bring that up to show that he did it today. And then that's just a tricky thing once you get into that. Right. It's really prejudicial to uh, people who have already committed crimes that you're saying that just because they've committed a crime before they've committed it here today. So if you're getting behind the policy of character evidence, that's what it's about, guys. Like you, you want to use evidence around this incident, testimony around this incident and try to stay away from, oh, they've acted like this before or they've done this before. But the reality is 
is that it's still going to come in sometimes because there's ways around, again, this bar. So with that said, like that's our big picture just to ground us. Let's get into some of the structure now and see how we're going to oh, frame hi. this. Hi, can, can I can I ask if does that fall under credibility? Does what fall under credibility? What you just said, what we're asking for from the courts when uh, supposedly a defendant was caught stealing cookies. So we're looking for credibility if they've done it before. So that wouldn't be looking for credibility in that case, which you're look, which you're, what the proponent of that evidence is trying to do is trying to bring in propensity, a propensity argument that would trigger character evidence. And then we're going to lay the, we're going to lay out the framework for, can this still be admissible? So I know I wouldn't say that this is a credibility issue or a, or a character credibility. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then do me a favor too. If anybody else have any questions throughout the lecture, raise your digital hand first and then I'll call on you. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and share screen. Okay. And we're going to start off with some of our legally fit charts here. All right, so you see character evidence. We have the big picture. Evidence of a person's character or character trait is not admissible to prove that on a particular occasion, the person acted in accordance with that character or trait. However, depending on whether it's a civil or criminal case, character evidence may come in under certain circumstances. So that's everything we just said, right? Generally, we don't like these propensity arguments, right? But sometimes they will come in. The first thing I want to start us off with are the common triggers. Not all of us may know of all the different ways that character evidence can actually be triggered. So I want to actually walk through that first. So let's say we have a Christian, not this Christian, because we know this Christian is a sweetheart. Let's say it's a random other Christian who's on trial for murder, right? So it's prosecution versus Christian for murder. Now, one common trigger would be the prosecution offering evidence of the defendant committing the same or similar conduct. All right, so let's go to, is it Kari? It's or Carrie. Carrie, <laughs> okay, cool. So Carrie, so tell me, what would be a, an example of a trigger there, right? Chris is on trial for homicide. What would be an example of the prosecution offering evidence of, of Christian committing the same or similar conduct? he's done something violent before um and let's just be as specific as possible with this just so we can kind of like you know imitate what some examples would be um he's attempted murder before okay so prosecution wants to bring up that five years ago he tried to kill somebody else that would be evidence of him committing same or similar conduct all right, next it says the prosecution offers evidence of the defendant's character trait that's consistent with the current charge. So Carrie there, what would be an example? I'm so sorry, my uh, Zoom cut out, do you mind repeating that? Okay, so I'm saying for the second trigger here for when the prosecution is offering evidence of the defendant's character trait that's consistent with the current charge, what would be an example of that? Oh, that like he was violent before. There we go. So you look at the charge, right? And the charge is homicide. What's character traits that go along with homicide? Typically, the main one is being violent, right? So we're not talking about he's done this before, he's killed somebody before or tried to kill somebody, but now we're just going to say, well, he possesses the character trait for that. So similar conduct can trigger character evidence and character trait can also trigger character evidence. All right, so great example. And then last is the defendant offers evidence of his character trait. This is the sneaky trigger for this character evidence rule. Um, what will be an example, Carrie, of Christian offering evidence of his own character trait in this trial? Saying like that he's peaceful normally or something like that. Exactly, I'm happy you switched it, right? He's not gonna say that he's violent. That's gonna go against his case. So he's gonna do the opposite, right? He's gonna go with a positive character trait that then makes it less likely he's committed the crime. But understand that 
when a defendant is talking about his own character, that's also going to trigger the character evidence rules. As we're going to learn here in a second, the defendant can't just bring up their character in some willy nilly way. Like they actually have rules that they have to satisfy as well in order to talk about their own character. All right. So those are your common triggers. Don't forget them. All right. I'm going to highlight for you, right, the main takeaway. So you have same or similar conduct. Let me make that a little bit bigger. You have same or similar conduct. Then you have character trait. And then you have D offering evidence of his own character trait. All right, those are your three. So more big picture. Let's make sure we're understanding trial a little bit too, right? We have two different types of witness examinations. We have direct examination and we have cross. Now, again, some of us has, have worked in summer externships and internships and know this well. I can speak to when I was in evidence class, I didn't really know how the court system worked and understanding this stuff really does set a foundation for you understanding these rules. So let me go to Cynthia. Cynthia, do you know really what direct and cross are all about and how direct typically works versus cross? Um, I know that on direct, you can offer opinion and reputation testimony. And on cross is when you can bring in the specific instances of past conduct. That's okay. the extent of knowledge in it. <laughs> so, and that's the extent. so those are some of the details that you already know about when can you do certain things. So that's good. But what is direct, right? So let's start off with some big picture. Oh, direct. Like when they're, okay. Yeah. When they're like first asking questions. So. Of uh, a witness. And so the other thing I want to get at too with direct is that, so typically a side will call their own witness. And typically, unless it's an adversarial which, witness, which is rare, this is a witness that's on your side. So it's prosecution versus the defense. Let's say the prosecution goes first. So the prosecution is going to say, hey, we're going to call Cynthia to the stand. Well, by when you call your own witness, that witness is on direct. And then what are you doing? You're asking your witness questions in a very like, you know, uh, guiding them through a story, right? So let's go through our, through our blueprint and read the detail of what we have. Both the plaintiff and the prosecution and the defendant both call their own witnesses to present their case or defense. When a party calls up one of their own witnesses, the questioning process is called direct examination. Typically, direct examination is used by a party to call a favorable witness who will share their story, views, or opinions. Rule, a party may solicit opinion, testimony, or reputation testimony from their witness on direct. So that was that specific rule that you were aware of. Now, cross-examination is typically, typically adversarial. So if the prosecution called Cynthia, well, then now the other side, in this case, the defense, can attack that witness and ask them questions, right? After party finishes their direct, the opposing party is allowed to cross-examine that witness by asking the witness questions on matters within the scope of what that witness just testified to on direct. Typically, cross-examination is used by the opposing party to attack the credibility of the witness or attempt to rebut the things said by the witness. Rule, a party may use specific instances of conduct during their questioning on cross-examination. No, a party may also use opinion and reputation testimony on cross-examination as well, but those chances are low, right? If I'm on cross-examination, that's the adversary witness. I don't want them giving more opinion or testimony because or, or reputation, because likely that's going to be in favorable of the other side or in favor of the other side. That opposing witness's opinions and views on the reputation will likely help their side and hurt the one cross-examining. Okay, so those are your different types of examinations. Just a little background there, right? And then what's very important for our character evidence rules are what you can do on each. So Cynthia, that takes us to the last part of our big picture, which is the different ways that you can offer character evidence. So Carrie just helped us out with some examples, right? So she said in prosecution versus Christian for murder, for the first trigger, there was, you know, we want to bring up evidence that he's uh, done this before. He's committed this crime. For the second one, she said that that he has a violent character trait. And then for the third one, she said that he's going to say maybe that he's pe uh, that he that he's peaceful. So can you give me an example of opinion testimony in this context? Um, I think it would be 
a witness saying that they have personal knowledge of the defendant. They have like uh, just been in situations with them before and that they would say in their opinion that person has a violent or peaceful character. Exactly, right? And a lot of times you can't get away from it saying actually in their opinion, right? Sometimes it won't technically say in their opinion, but it'll allude to that. But yeah, you need language to say that somebody is testifying and saying it's in their opinion. What would be an example, Cynthia, of then reputation testimony? Uh, knowledge, I guess, of other people or other people's perspective on the defendant's character. So like people in their community um, agreeing that the defendant has a certain character trait. Yeah, so the witness is going to be speaking on behalf of other people. That's what that's going to look like. Good. And then the last one, specific instances of conduct. What does that look like? The witness would say something like they've seen Christian assault someone on the street the other day or something like that. So you're looking for any type of specific incident. Oh, awesome. Right. So pretty good with the background there. So let's just go ahead and make that clear. Remember, on direct, typically... You're allowed to do opinion testimony and reputation testimony. And then it's on cross that we can bring in specific instances of conduct. All right. You guys made that look simple and easy. That was the big picture. Let's get into now some detail of the character evidence rule. Cynthia, I have it labeled as there are five different ways around the character evidence rule, right? So somebody's saying, hey, this is a character evidence violation. There's five ways around it. Can you label all of those five, some of those five? What you got for me? Um, is this? Okay, wait. I don't know if I can label five. <laughs> um, <laughs> is this like past criminal convictions or no? So that's going to be probably for impeachment, right? The okay. Okay. So let's see if we can okay. phone a friend. Somebody want to help her out? Raise your hand. Yeah, let's, let's phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Five ways around character evidence. These are ways to get over the rule and admit the evidence. Who's that? I can't see the name from this far. Oh, wait. Okay, I remember. Oh, you remember now? Wait, is this is this for non-propensity purposes? Like mo uh, motive, intent, or no? So that's going to be one section of the rules. Okay, that's one way. I can't yeah. I know one way. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to you. We'll, we'll go to the, the photo for a Kyra, was that you? Yes, habit and routine. Okay, so habit and routine is going to be one. Do you know any other ones? Um, yes, I do. Um, there is similar crimes and sexual assault cases, similar yeah. crimes and molestation cases. Um, and then also there's rule 415, but that's more for civil. Um, and then re reputation or opinion, which we already stated as well reputation or opinion what kind there, there's one big rule i'm not sure if you guys label it in the same way but there's one big rule that hasn't been mentioned that is the number one way you want to consider going around the character evidence rule mm, well i mean is it under i don't want to say like 404b other crimes wrongs that's that is a big one 404b is actually a big one as well Okay. So I, I just uh, removed part of the chart now or the, the blockage of the chart so you can see the rest of it. Here are the five different ways. Have you learned it as the defendant opens the door rule? Yes. There we go. Okay. So here are your five. Defendant opens the door rule. Defendant claims self-defense in a homicide case. And then what I did is I grouped in some of those exceptions that you just gave me into this other exceptions category. In other exceptions, I have charges or claims where the character evidence rules do not apply, charges or claims where character is at issue, and then all of those 404B permitted uses, right? I have all that in other exceptions. And then you have two more, rape shield and habit evidence, right? So don't be thrown off that Number three is called other exceptions, right? Essentially, all of these serve as exceptions. All of these serve as ways around the character evidence rule. So, Cynthia, going back to you, do all of these look familiar? Yeah, they do. Okay, good. And so, Cynthia, now I want you to have that quick go-to answer with confidence for yourself moving forward. We're like, all right, 
I know the five ways around because this is now what we're going to start building is your ability to navigate through questions quickly. So whenever you see a character evidence question and right and it's being triggered, you're immediately going to go into a checklist, right? Which of my five ways, if any, can be used here to get around this argument? And if you look at the chart, Right. There's I'm giving you immediately some ways to rule out certain options. So, Christian, in your case, right, or not your case, your 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 your, your twin that's also named Christian is on trial for murder. What type of case is that? Is that a criminal case or is that a civil case? A criminal case. It's a criminal case. So are all five of these options in theory available? Uh, no, we'd only, we'd go with the defendant opens the door with one, two, uh, three. Oh yeah. All of them are criminal. Yeah. yeah five. All of them are allowed in that criminal case, but we see that all are not allowed in a civil case. So if it was Cynthia versus Christian for battery and right, we wanted to bring up that he's hit somebody else in the past. Well, that takes out defendant opens the door rule that takes out self-defense in a homicide case completely. Right. And then even notice how, right. Just based off of what the crime is, sometimes certain exceptions and rules can be thrown out. Christian, if it's prosecution versus Christian for homicide, is there any opportunity to use rape shield here under these facts? If it's a homicide criminal case, so uh, yeah, they would. Well, no, I didn't give you any facts of there was any rape involved, right? Oh. If this a straight up homicide case, right? Rape shield has to involve some type of rape involved. That's, okay. Yeah. Makes sense where it has to be relevant to the charge. Exactly. So again, you want to be quick and easy with ruling out some of these. Um, and we're going to get into the detail of all these rules, but here it is in its big picture. So whenever you think character evidence... You got five ways around it, and you want to go through that. All right, so let's go to the next chart. This next chart is called the three-step process. If you know Legally Fit, you know we like formulas, we like hacks, we like ways uh, to make the rules simpler. So here's what I uh, encourage you to do for every character evidence question. First, identify the character evidence being offered and questioned. Examples. D's character trait for peacefulness, D's prior bad act of killing someone, right? Find the character evidence and what it is. Number two, make your diagram. Let's put a placeholder for that. I'm going to show you how to diagram here in a second, right? But you're going to make a diagram. I think you should diagram all your evidence questions, right? Because there's a lot of parties flowing through those questions, a lot of evidence, right? A lot of moving parts. And if you try to hold it all in your head, you're putting too much work on yourself. So I'm going to show you how to diagram at least specifically character evidence today. And then your third question is then simply, is the character evidence admissible through one of our five options, right? Every time you get a character evidence question, these are your three steps. And then it says, you have to run through all five options. Just because the evidence is not admissible under D opens the door rule doesn't mean it will not be admissible under, let's say, 404B or one of the other ways. It could be habit. It could be rape shield. It's only when all five options fail that the character evidence will be inadmissible. Do this process enough times in your practice and you'll get really fast at it. Trust me. To make your life easier, I'm going to share with you some shortcuts that I've come up with after doing so many practice questions. Based on the type of charge and or case, you can limit the number of options you have to consider, thus allowing you to get through the questions faster and with more confidence. So let's go ahead and remove this little white sheet here. I was going to block that out. And there we go, right? So you see here, based off of the type of charge, type of crime, here are the only options that are reasonable for uh, you to analyze to get through character evidence. So let's go with murder, homicide. That's one of the most popular ones. If it's murder, homicide, D opens the door should be considered. Homicide and self-defense should be considered. 404B in habit, right? So... Really, all that it took out was rape shield, and then it took out two of those other three in other exceptions. It took out this one, 
and it took out this one because yeah, those are very specific and they don't apply to homicide cases. So this is something for shorthand. This is something good for you to take a picture of, write down. And, you know, after you really understand character evidence, this is how you start to like increase your speed. Right now we're still building the framework and, and building our comfort with this topic. But this is just showing you again, how you can get a little cheeky and quick with answering these questions. Any questions on this three-step process? All right, so all we're doing is building the foundation. You, you identify the character evidence, you diagram, and then you go through all five options, right? And you wanna be able to do so quickly. All right, so let's talk about diagramming these questions. And then we'll start learning some of these specific rules around the, around the, the ways around character evidence. So for the first one, right, let's go ahead and have Michaela. Michaela, can you read that fact pattern? And I'm going to diagram on the board as we do it. Sure. So Chris Brown is on trial for aggravated assault and battery against Rihanna. At his trial, Chris Brown offers, can you help me? <laughs> Caruche. Caruche, who testifies that in her opinion, Chris Brown is honest and peaceful. Is this admiss admissible? Okay. So let's actually diagram together. What do you think is important here to just like see this clearly? What would you diagram? First, we know that um, it is aggravated assault and battery. Um, okay. So we know that... Uh, sorry. What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just like saying what you were saying. So we have aggravated assault. Okay, okay so th this would be a criminal case. Um, and there is a witness who is testifying for the defendant. Okay. And so how would you label that? How would you like put that in a shorthand diagram? Um, so let me help you out. So what I would do here is I would do prosecution versus Chris Brown. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you said that Chris Brown, the defendant, the defense is bringing a witness. I'm going to draw a line down from Chris Brown and then I'm going to put in K. Right. For oh. career. OK. All right. And then I'm going to do from Karuche. I'm going to do a dash and everything after this dash is about what that witness brought to the table. So how can you summarize what Karuche brought to the table? Um, honest and peaceful, which would be opinion testimony. So good. You want to say that it was what type of testimony that it was, because we know that's important for character evidence. So this was in the form of opinion testimony, and it was about Chris Brown being honest and peaceful. And there we go. This is now fully diagramming this question. I'm going to go ahead and on the screen, remove this and now you can see what that should look like on your end. One thing that you could include that you didn't mention, it's not the most important, is who the victim is. So you could put dash R just so you're like keeping organization of all the parties, right? And then you have prosecution versus the defendant. Under the defendant, you have the witness they brought in. Then you have the type of testimony that it was. And then you have what the actual testimony was. All right, Michaela, do you like that? Does that, is that clear? Does that make sense to you? It does. Good. So <laughs> I highly recommend for each question, you just do this as you go. Become secondhand, second nature, really quick and easy. And it just organizes all of it for you. And then you'll notice, Michaela, that you'll actually start to see certain issues just by your diagram, right? So phone a friend, right? What would we replace this right here? It says, um, Karuche came up and gave opinion testimony. What could we replace this with to then have an immediate issue? If Karuche, right, called by Chris Brown, gave not opinion testimony, but rather a different type of testimony that would be an issue, what would that be? Yeah, Christian. If she were to uh, do like a specific instance. There we go. So if you if you put specific instance of conduct here, right, and not opinion testimony, just by your diagram, you would say, oh, that's an issue, 
right? I'm not supposed to see that on direct examination. So yeah, diagramming is going to be really helpful. All right. So let's go ahead and do the next hypo um, just to show another version of the diagramming. Chris Brown's on trial for aggravated assault and battery against Rihanna. That's the same. At his trial, Chris Brown offers Karuche, who testified that in her opinion, Chris Brown's honest and peaceful. So actually all that was the same. It says then the prosecution then cross-examines Karuche and asks her if she knew that Chris Brown started a brawl at a nightclub with Drake two weeks ago. Is this brawl, evidence of this brawl going to be admissible? So it's the same thing, opinion, testimony, dash, um, honest and peaceful. So take a look, Michaela, as how we're going to uh, diagram when there's cross-examination. You're going to draw a line from prosecution to K and then put the double X. That's the symbol for cross-examination. And then if you want to be very detailed, which I like to be, I'm going to write what type of testimony it was here. This is a specific instance of conduct. And what is it of? It's of the bar fight, right? Slash that he's violent. All right. So that's how you diagram in once you have cross-examining going on in your fact pattern. Okay. So practice this, practice this. Once this becomes second nature and quick, you'll love it. It's a nice little hack. All right. So I think... We're ready to now learn the rules for defendant opens the door and then jump into some hypos. All right, so I have a question. I can't see. Linda? Hi, I just had a question. So wouldn't she, I don't know if this is what we were talking about, but wouldn't she not be able to bring in the opinion testimony because um, it wasn't attacked yet in the fact pattern? Okay, and so... Right now, right, exactly. I will comment on whether it was, it's gonna be admissible or not. Cause right now I'm just trying to show you how to diagram, how we're gonna go through. But now we're gonna like make sure we learn all the rules and we're gonna actually go back to that hypo and do it. So Linda, I'm gonna call on you when we do that hypo and then you can tell me whether or not it's admissible. Great, sounds good. <laughs> okay. So, the defendant opens the door rule. Just to make sure we're grounded, let me go to uh, Sam. Sam, what is the function of the defendant opens the door rule? What does it do for us? Uh, doesn't it introduce, it, isn't it a, a means of uh, the prosecution being able to continue um, to speak about a topic that the defendant himself brings up? Um, Yes and no, and I want to generalize it. So remember, right, back to what we had here, ways to admit character evidence, defendant opens the door. Ultimately, the function of this rule is to make some character evidence admissible. Right. Mm -hmm. There, And that's all I want to do for now. And again, now that we're just kind of getting into it, I just want us to stay connected to that. That Everything we're about to learn is just a framework for how to ultimately admit some character evidence. And so, Sam, within this rule, there's basically two doors that can be opened, right? Mm -hmm. So door number one is the defendant introduces evidence of his character trait. And door two is defendant introduces evidence of the victim's character trait. They both satisfy this rule. They both have in their framework of what can be done afterwards, et cetera. But those are the two doors. The number one rule that's tested is definitely door number one, but you definitely mm -hmm. need to know door number two as well. Got it. Right, so let's go ahead and talk about door number one. I've created this three question framework to really kind of guide you through this analysis. The first question is, did the defendant properly introduce evidence of his character trait? What I need you all to realize that's not always crystal clear when you're learning it is that there's actually rules in place for how the defendant defendant needs to talk about his own character, right? He has to do it properly. He has to do it timely. He has to make sure it's relevant, right? All these things. So don't think of the character evidence rules as just a limitation on the prosecution. That's mainly its purpose, but it's also a limitation on the defendant at times. So these rules right here that we're going to learn under that question are going to show us if the defendant properly opened the door. All right. If he didn't properly open the door, well, then his own evidence of his character trait is, a, in a, is inadmissible. 
But then let's say that he did properly open the door, right? He did properly introduce his character trait. Then the question is, what can the prosecution do in response? And what are the ways that the prosecution can respond? So let's go ahead and now look at these questions with their answers. So did D properly introduce evidence of his character trait? There are four elements. Element number one, D is offering the evidence, right? And so there are two ways that a defendant can offer the evidence. Cynthia, what are the two ways that a defendant can offer evidence about their own character? Either they mm -hmm. can. Mm -hmm. Reputation or opinion testimony? No. So. Oh, I'm just kidding. Yep. It's, and it's kind of a trick question, but it is definitely a question. What are the ways that you, right? right? So let's say you're on trial and let's say you want it to come out that you're peaceful. Well, what are your vehicles? What are your ways of communicating that? Uh, to them? Um, I mean, calling a witness. Is That's that, number one. Exactly. Okay. Um, I mean, maybe putting yourself on the stand. I don't know. There we go. Yes, you do know. That's exactly okay. the correct answer. <laughs> so either you take the stand yourself or you call a witness. All right. So let me go ahead and replace that now that we have the answer. So D is offering the witness, offering uh, the evidence, either through the defendant or through the defendant's witness. Okay. Next, the evidence of the character trait. I'm sorry, the evidence must be regarding the defendant's character trait, emphasis on defendant's character trait. It must be relevant to the defendant's current charges, so emphasis on relevancy there. And then it must be in the proper format, which is either opinion or reputation testimony. Those are the four elements. We're going to do some hypos testing this in a second. But again, these are elements that if the defendant does not meet, they can't even talk about their own character trait if these aren't met. But then once the defendant successfully opens the door, prosecution is like, yes, now we get to play. Now we get to go ahead and attack and do certain things, right? So it says, what can prosecution do in response? The prosecution can now attack the character trait that the defendant has introduced. So it's a limited scope of what the prosecution can do. It's only around what the defendant opened the door for, all right? But now they can attack. Now, what are the ways that the prosecution can attack? They can cross-examine the defendant or the defendant's witness, whoever brought in that character trait, but they can never use extrinsic evidence on cross-examination. Or, and or, the prosecution can call their own witness on direct. And since it's on direct, of course, you can only use opinion, testimony, or reputation testimony. So again, that's why we handled those foundational rules before. That shouldn't trip you up, right? Prosecution can respond in one of two ways. Cross-examine. Well, I know on cross, I can use specific instances of conduct. I just need to know no extrinsic evidence. Prosecution can also call their own witness, but they can only be opinion or reputation because it's direct. All right. So that is defendant introducing evidence of his character trait, the three kind of questions and ways you want to go through that. Um, any questions before we jump into some hypos? All right, let's see if we can put this all together. So question number one, Linda, we are going to you. All right, so we're going to want to diagram this. And this is one that we did already, right? So we have Chris Brown. Uh, excuse me. We have prosecution versus Chris Brown for aggravated assault and battery. So we know this is a crim case. Chris Brown offers Karuche, who testifies that in her opinion, that Chris Brown is honest and peaceful. So Linda, tell me, what do you think? Is this admissible? No. Okay, and so why is it not admissible? Because there has been no attack on his uh, truthfulness or like honest and peaceful character. On his peaceful character. Okay. So Linda, let's correct this right now. So when you say no, because there has been no attack on his character, that would be a reason why 
the prosecution would not be able to use D opens the door rule. Mm -hmm. But here is the prosecution trying to attack Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's offering the evidence? Chris Brown. Oh, yeah, he is. So you so, can't. Go ahead. So you would be able to bring it because it's your own witness? So, and let's not get, we don't want to be loosey with it, right? We want to be structured. So what is happening here? So Linda, what we're seeing here is the defendant trying to open the door, which then if he does do so properly, then the prosecution can respond by attacking that. So you were saying, oh, Chris Brown can't do this because, right, the door hasn't been opened, but that's exactly what's happening here. He is opening the door, but he must do so properly. And so what you want to do is go through those four elements that we just went through, right? So let's go ahead and take a quick poll because I want to get uh, a gist from everybody in the class. So put into the chat, right, to me, right, put into the chat, or you can just do it to everyone. Do you think that Chris Brown properly opened the door here? So you can just put yes or no. And if there's any detail you wanna provide, you can provide that detail. I'm gonna to go to the Zoom. I wanna be able to see what your answers are here. Chat. So we got yes, yes, yes. Yana says no. Okay, Lisa. Lisa has the perfect answer. Lisa, talk to me. All right, let's go back to our rule. If we go through this, Lisa, is the defendant offering the evidence here? Oh, you with me, Lisa? You gave the right answer in the chat. Oh, yes, he, he properly opened the door for his good character. Mm -hmm. However, um, truthfulness is not the trade for battery. Exactly. So let's go through these elements one at a time, Lisa. So first one is, is the defendant offering the evidence here? Yes. Was it through the defendant or defendant's witness? Through the defendant. It was through the defendant's witness. It's still the defendant offering it, but it was through the witness, right? Because it said Chris Brown called Karuche. Karuche is the one bringing this up, but that's all good. So the first element is met. Second element is, is that it's regarding the defendant's character trait. Yes, Chris Brown is offering this evidence and it's about Chris Brown's character trait. So that's good. What was the character trait or traits that was raised here. It was honest and peaceful. And here it says it must be relevant to the defendant's current charges. So you have to look at what the charges are. It's aggravated assault and battery. Now, going back to uh, Linda. Linda, does it matter whether somebody is honest, right? Is that relevant to whether they committed an aggravated assault and battery? No. Not at all. You could be the most right? Forth telling, truthful, violent person out there, right? You could do it and then say, yeah, I did it, right? So honesty is not relevant here, but violence is. So that's where this element is, right? Partial. It's like X and it's a check mark. It's not relevant for honesty, but it is relevant for him being peaceful. Was it the proper type of testimony? Yes, because it was properly opinion testimony. So the, the answer here, I'll even go to yep, our little answer sheet. This testimony is partially admissible under character evidence under D opens the door rule, right? And you get down to this element right here and it's yes or no, and there you go. So number one is, this is partially admissible. So in this situation, it would be the defendant who is offering the evidence that I'm honest and peaceful. It would be the prosecution that says, hey, objection, character evidence, 
because they don't want him to get up there and say anything that's favorable. So if they have any way to prevent that, they're going to do it. And this sounds like character evidence. And then the defendant is going to say, oh, it's okay. I have a way around character evidence. And he's going to use the defendant opens the door rule. He doesn't need rape shield. He doesn't need habit, et cetera. And when going through it, it will be successful, but only partially because he did overstep a little bit by bringing up a non-relevant character trait. All right, so before we move on to the next question, do I have any questions from you? All right, let's go to the next one. Let me take a volunteer. Who wants to do question number two? All right, John, let's go for it. Uh, should I read it out? Yeah. Chris Brown is on trial for aggravated assault and battery against Rihanna. At his trial, Chris Brown takes his stand and testifies that Rihanna hit him first and that he was only acting in self-defense. The prosecution then cross-examines Chris and asks if it's true that he started a brawl at a nightclub with Drake two weeks ago. But is the prosecution's evidence question of the club brawl admissible? Okay, so let's just ground ourselves a little bit here. This, this question takes us a little bit further into our trial, and now we really have, you know, who getting involved here? You have uh, the defendant himself. Uh-huh, and who else? Uh, then you have cross-examination, the prosecutor. Exactly, the prosecution going in and cross-examining. So again, like, Every situation just run through the same framework. So what I want you to do here, John, is kind of walk through the steps. If you need me to, I can go back to the to the rules in our chart. But I want you to walk through the same steps and then answer the question for me on whether the prosecution's evidence, right, specifically their question of the club club brawl, is that going to be admissible? Um. Okay. Um, so I, are we still doing D opens the door? Yep. We have not gotten past that rule. So there are four other ways, but we're not worried about those four other ways right now. The only way around is D opens the door. So that's what we're focused on. All right. So defendant is, is offering the evidence because he's the one on the stand. Um, uh, and it's regarding, I don't know if it's regarding his, the character trait of his. Okay. Why it's, not? it's just stating a fact of what happened. It's not, it's not talking about his past, anything that happened in his past. Okay. Uh, and then it's, it's definitely relevant. Uh, and I don't, it's not opinion or reputation testimony because it's him stating facts for what he thinks the facts are. Okay. So I would say it's it's not uh, admissible then. There we go. Perfection. Again, it's like different situation. I don't know what's going on, but let me just go through my framework, right? In order for the prosecution to use D opens the door, the defendant has to open the door. It says here, right? So some of us might've moved too fast. It says here at his trial, Chris Brown takes the stand and testifies that Rihanna hit him first and that he was only acting in self-defense. Well, that's just talking about the incident. That's just giving live testimony and his recollection of the facts, right? As John was just saying, there is no character trait of either Rihanna the victim or of Chris Brown himself being offered. So he has never opened the door. So then the prosecution would then have to find another way other than D opens the door because the defendant hasn't done so. So all of this almost becomes, right, immediate no. Let me do a red X. Immediate no because the defendant did not open the door. Now, if we go back to our big chart, again, we're just in D opens the door. But in theory, if you're doing a full analysis, you would say D opens the door is out of the picture, right? And then, John, just by the title... Are you going to be able to use the D claim self-defense in a homicide case? Rule? No, we're not in a homicide case. Exactly. He is saying self-defense, but it's not a homicide case. So we can't use this. What about charges or claims where the character evidence rule do not apply is 
aggravated assault and battery, one of those charges or claims where character evidence rules don't apply? No, it's not. Nope. Is this one of those charges or claims where character is at issue? That's like negligent entrustment, defamation? Nope. Yeah. And then 404B permitted uses. I always like to come back to that one because that one you have to slow down with. Is this going to be any rape shield? No. Is there? Is this uh, enough for habit evidence? No. no. So you've gone through all the options. All that's left is 404B. You will look through all your 404B to see if you have one. Let's go to our blueprint, right? Let's go to 404B. Here's 404B. Is this motive, right? And so again, what are we, let's go back to what our character evidence actually is. It was that he started a brawl at a nightclub with Drake two weeks ago. Right. And he's on trial for hurting Rihanna. So it's not like it's the same party to show motive or intent. So, yeah, motive is out. Intent is out. There's no mistake or absence of mistake here. This is not a uh, modus operandi or identity, not common plan or scheme, not knowledge, not opportunity and not preparation. So, yeah, none of these stand out. And by the way, this is how you go through these questions. You need to do enough practice questions where, you know, like clear examples of each of these permitted uses that you can quickly see, right? If this is that type of situation, for example, John, what's one of the, you know, give me an example that you, maybe you did in class of when identity or modus operandi is going to be triggered. For modus operandi, if like, like the Zodiac killer, if someone does something very specifically in a, in a way that only they do. Exactly. So it's like, Oh, I'm going to show that. Look, like, He's done this before when he robbed a bank wearing a president's mask and a tutu. And now this person was wearing a president's mask and a tutu. Exactly. It has to be something very specific and unique. Again, that was not the case here. So just like John had that quickly accessible, you want an example for each of those. So coming back to this, defendant opens the door rule is not applicable, nor any of the other ways around. So now you can confidently say that this evidence will be inadmissible. All right. Um, let's get some like, you know, feedback on this one before we move on. Christian, did you catch that early on or did you kind of fall for the trap here and kind of quickly going over Chris Brown's testimony, thinking he did open the door when in fact he did not? Nope. You there, Christian? All right, let me come back to Christian. Let me go to Michaela. Michaela. How did you do with that question? Did you catch that initially? And if not, do we understand, you know, how everything played out now? It was definitely confusing at first. I was looking for that, that character evidence and then kind of jumped straight to thinking that that was a specific instance of conduct that they were bringing up, but it all makes sense now. Good. And so Michaela and everybody else remember, these questions are trying to trip you up, right? And so one last kind of tip that I would give, like, when reading this, because this is essentially not a normal situation or not how it's supposed to play out, you have to be confident in labeling what it is as you go. So I want you to read when it says, at his trial, Chris Brown takes the stand and testifies that Rihanna hit him first and that he was only acting in self-defense. I want you to immediately do some reading comprehension there and say, oh, this is just live testimony, right? And then it says prosecution then cross-examines and ask Chris if it's true that he started a brawl at a nightclub and you're like, oh, that's a specific instance of conduct from the past that right is trying to be used in a character evidence way. All right, can the prosecution do this? And then immediately I'm ruling out defendant opens the door because there are no facts of the defendant doing just that. All right, Michaela, let's go ahead and do number three. Go ahead and read that out loud for us, please. Sure. Chris Brown is on trial for aggravated assault and battery against Rihanna. At his trial, Chris Brown offers Kariche, who testifies that last week Chris was a peacemaker in an altercation he had with a hostile fan. Is Kariche's testimony admissible? All right. So talk to me. What do you think? Okay. So the defendant is offering the witness... Um, who is testifying toward his peacefulness with a specific instance of conduct. Accurate reading comprehension and uh, yeah, diagramming. Love it. 
Okay. Um, so yes, he's offering the evidence by calling a witness um, regarding a character trait, which is peacefulness. Um, and that is relevant to assault and battery showing that he's peaceful. Um, and it is opinion testimony, but it has a specific instance of conduct. So I'm going to say it's not admissible. There we go. Awesome. And I would go ahead and even, I see what you're saying that it, oh, it's, it's kind of opinion still, but it also would be like, I would just label that as its entirety as a specific instance of conduct. Okay. Good. And then, so, yep, the answer to number three is no. Cruce's testimony is not admissible because the elements of D opens the door rule are not all met. So again, you're using these rules to even determine whether the defendant themselves can bring in that evidence. And here, Chris Brown and his witness Caruche have improperly tried to bring in favorable character evidence. Awesome. Great job going through that question. And I mean, literally Michaela did that perfectly, right? In that you don't think about this too much. All you do is go through that system that I just gave you. You go through the steps and it's like, oh, there's the issue. And there's then my result, right? It's kind of that simple. You take kind of the, the heavy thinking out of it. All right. So we have a couple more questions. Let's go through them. So let's go with uh, Yana. Yana, go ahead and uh, read number four for me, please. Hello. Um, Chris Brown is on trial for aggravated assault and battery against Rihanna. At his trial, Chris Brown offers Karuche, who testifies that in her opinion, Chris Brown is peaceful. The prosecution then cross-examines Karuche and asks her if she knew that Chris Brown started a brawl at a nightclub with Drake two weeks ago. Okay, so specifically, is the question of the club brawl going to be admissible here? Okay, um, so again, um, I think it would be the option where a defendant opens the door, uh, who testifies in her opinion, and then it's an opinion testimony, um, and it's about Chris Brown being peaceful, um oh wait i'm sorry i think i'm reading the wrong the wrong section oh every, everything you said was correct so far okay wait sorry <laughs> um and so yana i think you're doing great but let's go ahead and just get structured here right here's i want you to be disciplined mm -hmm. what's the evidence that we're looking to see if it's admissible what are we looking to see if it's admissible Um, like the cross, um, oh, Karusha's opinion about, no, mm -hmm. sorry, like, trying to see if, um, is the prosecution evidence question? Um, like we're trying to see if the whole, like the section about the brawl at a nightclub would be admissible. Good. So yeah, I want you to just get like very, just like structure. What are we trying to assess the admissibility of? We're trying to assess the admissibility of the prosecution's question on cross-examination about the club brawl. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to say the prosecution's question is going to be labeled as character evidence, right? Because it's all about like similar conduct that took place in the past. So we're going to label this as character evidence. So then now we need to see if the prosecution can find a way to admit this character evidence, one way is if the defendant opened the door. So then now what you're gonna do is see, did the defendant properly open the door to talking about a violent specific instance of conduct? So mm -hmm. then that's the first question. So did Chris Brown open the door? That's the question you're gonna ask. You have your elements. You essentially softly went through them already, but yes, did Chris Brown open the door to his character? Um, I mean, he provided um, like a witness who testified. So could you say that's how he opened the door? And so here are the elements for properly opening the door. Let's go ahead and erase all of our notes from the last one. Here are the elements for properly opening the door. Did Chris Brown offer evidence? Yes. Yep. Let me put the check mark. Chris Brown I mean, offered evidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it regarding his character trait? Um, yeah. Because he yep. said he was mm -hmm. 
that because this character trait was for being uh, peaceful. Exactly. Then would you say peacefulness is relevant to Chris Brown's current charge for aggravated assault and battery? Um, yeah, I would say it's like, like, yeah, relevant, pertinent. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And then was it properly in the form of opinion or reputation testimony? Um, wasn't it special instances like, right? Karuche. So, so here's why you want a diagram because now you're mixing up what the prosecution did oh. and what Chris Brown did. Yeah. Oh, so okay. So who testifies in her opinion? So it is an opinion. Yeah. Sorry. I got confused. Uh, yeah. And this is why I was saying, uh, Jan, there's so many parties and there's so many things going on. Mm -hmm. This is why you want to like diagram as you go to not get those things mixed up. But yes, this is properly opinion, uh, testimony, reputation, testimony. So now that the defendant has opened the door, that tells us the prosecution can attack. They can attack mm -hmm. peacefulness now. Mm -hmm. How can they do so? They can do so by cross-examining the defendant's witness, and then on cross, they can use specific instances of conduct, or they can call their own witness on direct examination. Did the prosecution mm -hmm. properly do one of these two things? Um. If I remember correctly, they cross-examined the witness, right? Yep. Um, yeah, cross-examined the witness and um oh, but they used extrinsic evidence. Does that matter? Did they so so now we need to understand what extrinsic evidence is? And so Yana, everybody, make sure you understand this. This is not extrinsic evidence. When it's simply a question, right? It says prosecution cross-examines and then asks her. So it is not extrinsic evidence to just ask the question. It's extrinsic evidence if you don't like the answer and then you want to bring in something else. So this is not extrinsic evidence. This is just normal, specific instances of conduct on cross-examination in the form of a question. Is that clear, Yana? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. So and that means they properly did what they can do on cross-examination. So what was the order of sequence here, right? First sentence is just the case, right? The second sentence is D, properly opened the door. Then prosecution properly attacked. In this case, everything is admissible. Here we go, right? It's like, hey, defendant, right? You wanted to start talking about your peaceful character trait. Cool, we can talk about it now. And now I'm going to attack it. And they did so within the rules on how to properly attack. All right, Yana, are we feeling good about that question now that we've worked through it together? Yes, definitely better. Thank you. Okay, good. And so what I want you to remember and everybody remember, I'm giving you this new system, no matter how the question changes, no matter how the facts change, the parties, right, all these things, you still run it through the exact same order of sequence, right, the same question. And so reminding you about the diagramming too, right? So here's how you would diagram this, Yana, in the future when you write it out to not get confused. You would say it's prosecution versus Chris Brown. Chris Brown then brought Karuche to the stand who testified that in her opinion, you would know right there, it's in her opinion, opinion testimony, that he is peaceful. So there it is, right? Like we see here what the defense did. Then we can even do it in a different color, what the prosecution did. Then next, the prosecution Double X, cross-examination, they crossed the, the direct witness, Karuche, and then asked about a specific instance of conduct about a brawl, right? And all of this was okay. So again, just do enough questions, you'll get familiar with this, but this is the game, and that's how it's played. All right, so let's do number five, and let's talk through this. So this one's very similar. It says Chris Brown's on trial for the same thing against Rihanna. At trial, Chris Brown offers Karuche, who testifies that in her opinion, Chris Brown's peaceful. Same, right? So prosecution, prosecution versus Chris. Chris calls Karuche, opinion testimony. 
for peaceful. The prosecution then cross-examines Karuche and asks her if she knew that the uh, Chris Brown started a club brawl. So same thing about the brawl. But now it adds on. It says Karuche responds no. Then it says the prosecution then seeks to admit a video recording of the security camera at the nightclub showing this brawl. All right. Let's go back to Kyra. Kyra, what do we have here, right, with that extra sentence? What is this triggering? What rule is this triggering? And is this ultimately going to be admissible? Um, I'm going to say no, because it's not. Um, I feel like the prosecution is. Hold on. Give me a second. Let me look at my notes really fast. OK, no worries. Mm... Well, I feel like it's no because they are trying to admit other evidence. It's like the reverse of the problem that we just did. They're not allowed to do this is why I'm saying no, it won't be admitted. Yes. And not that you want to call it other evidence, but specifically extrinsic evidence. Yes, correct. Right. So here is what Chris Brown did. OK, calling Karuche and opinion about being peaceful. Yes, that was fine because then that opened the door. But once that she gave the answer of um, no. Good they decided to bring in the- Let me just, and let me just walk it through, right? So all of us can make sure we can see that like it was good until it wasn't. So Chris Brown could do that. And so then could the prosecution then ask about the club brawl? Yes. Yes. And then Karuche is entitled to give her answer of yes or no. And Karuche could be lying. Let's say we even know that she was lying, right? It's, in response that the prosecution went too far. Like that's where everything stopped being by the book. Once the prosecution then said, well, Danny, she said, no, well, now we want to bring in evidence of the video. That is extrinsic evidence because now you're bringing in something outside of the court. You're bringing in something additional to prove this point. So back to what I was talking about with you, Yana, just asking the question is not extrinsic evidence. When you're bringing in something else outside of the court, you're bringing something in to help prove this point. That's extrinsic evidence. That goes too far. So is the video recording admissible? No. And again, all you're doing is following, right, these rules right here. Did D properly open the door? What can the prosecution do in response? And then what are the proper ways for them to respond? Awesome. So yeah, Kyra, how are you liking these like three steps? Is it making sense to kind of go about it in this formulaic way? Yeah, what's your immediate feedback so far? Yes, it's making sense. Okay. And it helps you like if you get stuck to go back to the first step so you're not lost. Exactly. And then all we have to do is enough practice questions and kind of like start to get out of our own head, everybody on maybe like looking into the facts in a certain way. Like this is literally almost as transactional of a class as it gets. It's very mathematical and just matter of fact. There's not a lot of opinion or maybe this and maybe that. And like either this is opinion or is reputation or specific. Like there's not going to be confusing. You just need to know the rules and know when certain things are done and if that's OK or not. So. Right. When we go back to these questions, right, it was like in number two, you had to just quickly see here the defendant never opened the door. They never talked about their character. Don't get thrown off by that. So when the prosecution tries to do it, they can't. Right. And number three, it was like, oh, Chris Brown opened the door properly. Oh, the prosecution properly attacked. Everything is good. And number five, it was, oh, the defendant opened the door. The prosecution responded. Oh, but then the prosecution went too far and tried to bring in extrinsic evidence. Right, it's all uh, along the same framework. All right, so let's do our last hypo for the day. And this is number six. And this is where we're going to bring in the whole victim rule, right? And so I'll, I'll show you the rules at the same time. The victim rule is very easy once you master door number one about the defendant talking about his own character trait. You'll see how similar this is. So it says, Chris Brown's on trial for aggravated assault and battery against Rihanna. Shocking. Chris Brown claims that he was acting in self-defense. All right, so let's go ahead and just, you know, take notes of important things. He's claiming self-defense. At his trial, Chris Brown calls Matt Kemp as a witness. Make sure you're diagramming. So prosecution versus Chris Brown calls Matt Kemp as a witness. Matt Kemp testifies in what? His opinion. Write that down. 
Rihanna is a very violent person. So that Rihanna equals violent. So he's talking about the defense is bringing somebody to talk about the victim here. This is where the difference lies. The prosecution then cross-examines Matt and asks, is it tr if it's true that Rihanna was a peacemaker at a recent political protest? Kyra, we're not even gonna get into like, oh, like. What kind of protest was it? Oh, what political? What, what side of the uh, you know politics was it on? No, I just need you to summarize that. So basically, on cross examination, what did they do here? They brought in extrinsic extrinsic. I can't say that word right now. Evidence yeah. by mentioning that it was a political protest because we I just was talked about, we just talked about this though. It's only extrinsic evidence if they're doing what if they're responding to the answer that the witness gave that they didn't like. And not if they're responding, yeah, but responding to it by bringing something else in. But yeah, it, typically you're not even supposed to ask any more about it, but really it's when you bring something here. So this is just asking if it's true. So this is not extrinsic evidence. So I just want you to label this as on cross-examination, what we have here is specific instances of conduct regarding Rihanna being peaceful. Like that's all you need to summarize that as. Like don't get in caught up in the whole political protest, all that. This is specific instances of conduct that Rihanna is peaceful. Then it says the prosecution calls Usher, where'd he come from, to the stand who testifies that in his opinion, Chris Brown is a very violent person. So I'm running out of space here, but I would do this up under, I'm just gonna go here, calls Usher to the stand, who testifies that in his opinion, that Chris Brown is violent. So again, don't get lost in the sauce. Chris Brown talked about Karuche. Excuse me. Chris Brown talked about Rihanna, right? He brought Matt Kemp. Matt Kemp said, yeah, in my opinion, Rihanna is very violent. Prosecutor said, oh, okay, we're going to talk about the victim now, huh? So we're going to respond. And they responded by doing two things. Can you summarize the two things that they did here, Kyra? What is the yes. summary of what the prosecution did in response? They brought in their own witness and asked on direct for that witness um, their opinion, testimony. About what? Like summarize what they, what they accomplished, right? So again, Chris Brown brought in Matt Kemp to you know talk talk badly on rihanna right and show why she's violent so what did they do in response they brought in an, a, the, another their own witness to testify that chris brown is violent by using his opinion that he's violent okay that's up. one thing that they did and they also um um i don't know i don't know that part Let's you see. do um, just, it well they're rebutting that examines Matt asks as if it's true that Rihanna was a peacemaker at a recent political protest so they are kind of I guess just uh, yeah I don't know what to say for that one yeah and let's simplify it like all they're doing is trying to like rehabilitate Rihanna right like Chris Brown just tried to drag Rihanna through the mud right say she was violent and then now the prosecution is basically saying like nah she's peaceful so this is really good. I'm happy we're doing this. And, and Kyra, I want you to understand like all of this is just like a game. This is like, you know, as it would be arguing with uh, a partner, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, right? Arguing amongst friends, right? Chris Brown is saying Rihanna is violent. And the prosecution is saying, no, Rihanna is peaceful. You're actually the one that's violent. So I want you guys to humanize these facts and really see it as just that. All right, one more time. Chris Brown called Matt Kent, who's got his back and is basically saying, yeah, the victim, Rihanna, she's violent. She actually is the one that started all this, right? Like that's what they're getting at by calling her violent, right? Because he's claiming self-defense. No, she's violent. And the prosecution is like, no, we're going to rehabilitate Rihanna. We're going to bring in somebody to show, or we're going to bring in something to show that Rihanna is actually peaceful. And we're actually going to say, no, you're the violent one. Now, the question is, now that we've summarized that, is this proper under the rules of evidence? Let's go to our rules for door number two. All right. 
So first thing we need to look for is whether the defendant properly opened the door. Kyra, going through the four elements is very similar. There's one change. It's V's character trait, but let's go through it. Is D offering the evidence? The first thing we're talking about is Chris Brown calling Matt Kemp. So yeah, was D offering the evidence there? Yes. Easy peasy, yes. Was it regarding the victim's character trait? Yes. Yes. Was it relevant to defendant's current charges? Yes. Because if Rihanna was violent, that makes it more likely that... He was acting, I don't want to say acting in self-defense, but... Yeah. Yes. I think it's safe to say, like, yeah, that it makes it more likely that he was, in fact, you know, acting in self-defense. So, yes, this is relevant. And then was it in the proper type of testimony? Yes. So what that tells us is just what at this point, Kyra, by doing that analysis, that tells us what? That prosecution can respond to what was well, before, that. Well, before you go into prosecution can respond, it tells us that Chris Brown was allowed to bring that evidence uh, or that testimony against Rihanna. Okay. Yes. So I want you to remember that you have to also scrutinize whether D properly opened the door first. So what we now know, going back to the hypo, because... As you saw a second ago, what we're doing is going along the sequence of events to see if everything checks out and if not, at what exact point it, it, it goes south. So if you're looking at that hypo, right, you have, you have one thing that happens here, which is um, he calls Matt Kemp. That's number one. Then you have cross-examination of Matt. That's number two. And then you have calls Usher. That's number three. So you have to analyze all three. When you go through number one, now we know one is good to go and he could talk about Rihanna. Then now we need to look at the rest of the rules to see about the prosecution to see if two and three are okay. What can the prosecution do in response? Go ahead and summarize that whether you want to read it or put it into your own words. Kyra, what can the prosecution do in response? Once they the can, yeah. um, Once the once it's properly introduced um, by the defendant, they can re rehabilitate the victim's character trait that the defendant attacked, or they could attack the defendant for having that character trait that he accused the victim of having. There we go. So that looks a little bit like what we have here, but just sticking with the rule, if you talk about the victim, the prosecution can now say, no, we're going to rehabilitate the victim. And then they can also say, you know what? You're actually the person that has that character trait. So it's essentially a two for one, right? So thinking strategically, let's switch it up and get some more coverage here. Let's go back to Michaela. Thinking strategically, if you're the prosecution, do you rather the defendant open the door through door number one or door number two? Door number two, because then you can rehabilitate the victim and also attack the defendant. There you go. It's a two for one. Now I get to bring up the fact that she was at a recent political protest, right, which the jury might now love and, and soak up. And now I get to simultaneously attack your character now. So exactly. Let's look at this strategically like the game that it is and how attorneys are using this in real life. So, yes, those are the two things that you can do. And then how can you do it? It's based back in our simple rules. On cross-examination, you can use specific instances of conduct, no extrinsic evidence. If you're going to call your own witness, it has to be opinion or reputation testimony. So when we go back to the problem, Kyra, and we look at number two of the cross-examination and the question about knowing if Rihanna was a peacemaker at a recent political protest, is that going to be admissible based off of everything we've just seen? Yes. Yeah. You're allowed to rehabilitate and it was properly done so through specific instances of conduct on cross. And there is no extrinsic evidence here. This is good to go. So check mark for number two. And then number three, the prosecution then calls Usher to the stand to testify that in his opinion, Chris Brown is a very violent person. What about this one? Yes, because they're using um, an opinion of their witness. There we go, right? Like, yes, like it says that you can do this by either cross-examining or calling your own witness. So the prosecution was like, right, when it comes to attacking Chris Brown, character trait, we're gonna call our own witness who's then gonna give opinion testimony. And there it is, that's what we had, and that is admissible. So good, we've gone through the question and hopefully we're building some habits here. Break the question up. 
so much of this is really reading comprehension and summarizing what took place and kind of getting out of the fluff and categorizing these different things for what they are. The first one was Matt Kemp taking the stand and giving opinion testimony about the victim. Summarized it as that. Next, the prosecution cross-examined Matt Kemp, the defense witness, and tried to rehabilitate the victim. Okay, summarize that. And then lastly, the prosecution called their own witness to try and attack Chris Brown's character. Well, then now I have to go into my rules to see if this can be allowed. And as we did, going through the defendant opens the door rule. All of this is allowed. All of this will be admissible. Questions, Kyra? No, I'm looking at my notes to see if I have this about um, rehabbing the victim in my notes right now. If not, I need to add it. Yeah. And the good thing I could tell you, right, you know, for those that are familiar with Legally Fit, one thing we always talk about are uh, rule variants, right? Things like that with, with evidence. It's very rare, if ever, you're going to have any rule variants between what I'm teaching you and your professor, because this all comes from the FRCP, right? So it's not like it's a, a torts class where you can use maybe this restatement or this modern rule, right? It's all from the FRCP handbook. So yeah, I would feel confident that that is a rule that we should all have around de-opening the door by talking about the victim's character trait. Okay, so... Let me go ahead and put a bow as to where we're at in our character evidence review. Um, so going back to our big picture chart, what we did here was break down character evidence from a big picture and understand the game of this, right? One side is gonna argue this, typically the defendant, but sometimes the prosecution. They're gonna raise character, excuse me. They're gonna raise character evidence as a way to bar evidence. Well, the proponent of the evidence is going to try to still admit the evidence, and they have five possible ways of doing so. The most tested and the most complex rule is defendant opens the door rule, and that's the rule we just went through in detail here. And again, I expect a lot of us to have some clarity as to how to go through these questions, but you're going to need to practice this consistently to have the comfort in the rules and also have the confidence to just summarize those facts in the way that I was encouraging you to do so. Um, and so in your own studying, what you would now want to do with this now clarity is add on the rules for declaim self-defense in a homicide case, those other exceptions, rape shield, and habit evidence. OK, there's a few things that we're going to do before we wrap up. And we're also going to do a giveaway. So don't head out just yet. We're going to give away some cool items right now. Um, but I want to kind of get, you know, a little bit of, you know, did we have the light bulb moment? Let's go to uh, Yana. Yana, how are we feeling about character evidence? Like, do we have a system now? Are we liking where this is going? Or do we still have some like big lingering questions that I need to answer before you go on your own? I mean, this was very, very helpful because um, like I really like my professor, but this is not how he explained it. We never did big picture, small picture organizing. It was just like rules and exceptions and kind of like all over. Yeah. But you making these charts and saying, OK, first decide which one it is, then going to the rules was like definitely way more helpful. And um, at least I understand now I just have to do more practice which is normal like these things come with practice but again it was very helpful I appreciate it thank you so much thank awesome. you I'm really glad to hear that and yes like and hopefully you're seeing Yana like how I like to teach and how I mean this is how I had to study for myself and so I want to encourage everybody because we're not always taught in this way. And it really is then building habits to stay disciplined, even with what I teach you. And so remember when you go and practice to stay disciplined with the big picture and then this three-step process that I've given you, right? Like identify the character evidence, right? And what it is. So like we saw that. And when we did question number three, we identified all three pieces, number one, number two, and number three, like always identify them. Then after you identify them, make your diagram, right, of what's going on. Because like we said, these questions can get crazy and there's a lot going back and forth. And then look to see if you can make it through your rule. And then we have our own specific framework for D opens the door. Um, okay. Um, any lingering questions uh, before we go ahead and wrap up for the day on D opens the door or character evidence? Yeah, Michaela. 
I was just wondering for the last hypo, if uh, the defendant wasn't asserting self-defense, would that change anything? You tell me. I mean, I don't think so. I think that would only matter if it was a murder charge. Exactly, because we know it brings in that whole other exception. I think it would make it a little bit more difficult to argue that Rihanna's violent character trait is relevant. Not that it would not make, make it irrelevant, but I think the fact that he's claiming self-defense really brings into play whether or not she was violent or not. Okay. Does that okay. make sense? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Great question. Okay, guys, so that wraps up. Um, before we head out, I did want to share that today was essentially a demonstration of what you guys can all get in Legally Fits Master the Subject, right? So in our materials that we have on the website, you get a lecture video that was not a live version like we did today, but it's a recording of a live lecture where we've walked through these steps and explained it to other students. They're asking the popular questions and we're working through it. And it's a live lecture. You also get these hypos that you see here, and they go through and give you examples of most of the tested rules. For example, with even within character evidence for 404B, for all that all the mimic cop rules, you have an example for each of those. So you can have that example that's a go-to that we talked about. You get blueprints, which are traditional outlines with a little bit of an elevated experience. You have notes, how it's commonly tested. So even everything that we learned is also in outline format. So you can use that for your outlines. And then of course we have charts, right? So it's not just character evidence. We got hearsay, all right? Three-step process and all these rules, how to diagram hearsay questions, et cetera. So if you're interested, just go ahead and check out the website. It's legallyfitstudent.com. On the front page, you have a whole master the subject, quick button. You can click there and then get a free, or excuse me, get a master the subject. We are gonna raffle off a free one right now for somebody in here. So.